right. Hey, you guys, welcome back. We are doing another athlete interview. And today I am really excited to have Braden Waterman on with us. He has got an amazing story. I hope you guys, yeah, I know you guys are going to be inspired by it. So Braden, how are you doing, man? Doing great. Um, doing really good, actually. Uh, after, the, after the first two weeks, got a little bit better. And it's just been, just been getting better and better every day. Very cool. So yeah, so you guys, I'm excited for you to meet Brayden. He is an incredible young man. He's a junior at Paso Robles High School, a football player and a basketball player. And he has been facing a pretty intense battle. He's been battling cancer. So I'm just excited to get to ask Brayden some questions, do some interview with him today, and let you guys just hear some of his, uh, his story. So it's going to be really good. So, hey, Brayden, man, yeah. tell, us, tell us a little bit about yourself, just your background. Um, sports you played growing up, a little about your family. Mm -hmm. Just introduce yourself to, to everyone watching. Yeah, so, uh, so I mean, I'm a, I'm a junior here at Paso Robles High School. Um, I've, I've been playing football and basketball for as long as I can remember. Um, always been in love with the, uh, with the ball. Um, my parents are, uh, they own a vineyard. It's called Brochel Vineyards. Um, so we live on 20 and a half acres. So, I mean, it's, wow. so during this whole quarantine thing, it's, it's fun because we don't, it's not really super boring. So we're able to get out and get uh, active. So, um, yeah, so I was, I was diagnosed with cancer. Um, what was it? It was literally on New Year's Eve. Um, and, uh, they diagnosed me with Hodgkin's lymphoma. So. That was that was when all the uh, all the excitement started, for sure. Wow, man! So so New Year's 2019, so just about four months ago. Yes, yes. Four so it ago. was yeah, yeah, four months ago. Yeah, so yeah. So give us a little bit of more backstory. Give us a little bit of a glimpse in the life of Braden. You know, growing up, you have a younger brother, right? You yeah. So I got a I got a younger brother. Uh, he's a freshman. His name is Bryson. Um, it's been, I mean, it's been we've been we've been good i mean we we fight sometimes but um no we're we're cool with each other i mean we hang out a lot um but i mean it's just been it's literally just been sports and that's basically it that's so you were in football season you're a quarterback right yeah so i'm a quarterback yeah yeah and you're pretty uh, good from what i from what i from what i hear what i understand so yeah were, yeah you know wanted, so, you wanted to play at the next level been, yeah that's the point know, been recruited and stuff right so you were in your football season, getting ready to or transitioning to basketball. So yeah. How were you feeling? So the, the, so the backstory is, um, yeah. So I was uh, I was playing football. Um, we started the season. I uh, I played games, and then it was like I don't know. It was like week six. I uh, I broke my finger. I broke one of my fingers, um, and I went in. I went in to go get an X-ray. And as soon as, or so, so, you know, when they go to the extra and they give you, like, they check your temperature and all that. So when they check my temperature, I had a fever that day. Um, and it was, it was weird because I had never, like, I wasn't sick or anything. Like, it was just, it was weird. So fast forward um, two weeks, three weeks, it, it gets, my finger starts feeling better. I'm healed back up, start playing again. But uh, fevers, I start getting fevers. Um, so I start getting fever like one every day. So it starts one every day. It's not it's not crazy, but it's not like uh, it's not something that you just like it's unnoticeable. So I mean, so I mean I'm still I'm still feeling it. Um, so then fast forward a little bit longer, uh, we play more games, and then it was like phew, October. Um, I start getting two to three fevers a day, and these fevers are just they're just wiping me out. Like I'm like I got no energy. I'm just, I'm sweating constantly. I'm losing like a lot of weight. So I was at, before we start football season, I was about 203. And then after this, well, like December, I was about 175. So it was a huge weight loss uh, problem. And then I was just getting fevers and they were just, they were just killing me. And like I was just, like I was just drained. Um, so we thought that it was like a, a, uh, like a virus or something like I was like I had a valley fever or something like that um so they kept doing blood test after blood test and still couldn't figure out anything um doctor said that they they just they're like oh we need to keep doing blood tests to keep figuring out what is what's wrong with you so I mean I've I probably got 
a hundred plus blood tests um, from the from October to December. Oh yeah, it was that, and then so it was like my hemoglobin was so my hemoglobin is like a I don't know it's like the thing I, honestly I don't even know what to describe it. It's it's pretty hard to describe, but um, my hemoglobin was dropping a lot. So like normal hemoglobin is like fifteen, and mine was about eight seven seven or eight, um, and it was it was dropping a lot. Um, so it was it was it was very um, weird why this was happening. I was getting fevers. I was sweating, like soaking the bed. Um, and then it was literally New Year's Eve. We went over to uh, Valley Children's Hospital. My doctor referred me over to the clinic over there. He was like, "Let's let's go see because they're they're more they know more about what like what maybe I have than um, than he does." Um, so I went over there. Um, and they said, they gave me, they, uh, they ran a blood test. Um, and they said, go get some lunch. We'll, we'll have your blood results back in about an hour, hour and a half. So we went and eat lunch, uh, came back. And uh, she says, she says, I don't know what's wrong with you, but we're going to admit you into the hospital because your hemoglobin is so low and you're getting fevers for no reason. And we don't know why, so we want to admit you so that we can figure out what is wrong with you. Mm. Um, so that was, that was probably, that, that day last night was probably the worst, I would call that the worst day of my life so far. Um, it, was, it was terrible. So I get into the hospital and uh, they, they run all these tests, they're giving me all this stuff and then they, they've been, they put me in surgery, they uh, put a port in me so they don't have to do IV. So it's faster, I guess. Um, and then they they let one of my fevers, so I was getting fever, and they let it go um, through the whole night, and it was, it was miserable. It was just like something that you never want to experience. I mean, it's just it's just like it. Like, I don't know. I can't even explain. It was it was rough, very rough. Um, so yeah. So they let they let that run literally ten, fifteen hours straight nothing no no um advil or anything to help me right so yes yeah, so that was that was basically and then yeah and then they come in and then they the next day they figured it out they they said i had hodgkin's uh, stage three lymphoma so yeah the doctor comes in and it was like it's you got you got cancer like that's literally that's literally how he said he came in and he said said i don't I don't know how to tell you this, but you have cancer um, yeah, so how did you feel, man? What was the emotions when you first heard and got that diagnosis? yeah you know? yeah, you I know, get asked that a lot how was your how was your like emotion i mean honestly i was so I was so like tired and just beat down from the night before that I honestly really didn't like i was I was happy that they I was actually happy that they figured it out right. like it was it was one of those things where I was just like, thank you for finally figuring it out. Because I, like, I, I did not want to go through another fever round again. Like it just, it's, yeah, it just. So it's, it's it difficult something. news to hear, but at least there's some clarity and now you can have right, a right, right. address it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so it didn't really, the idea of me having cancer didn't really hit me until actually after I finished the chemo treatment as everything. After I finished my third round or my fifth round three weeks ago or four weeks ago, I that was when I really like kind of just thought about everything. I was just like, like I like I went through this, I experienced this, like this was something that I that I went through. It didn't really, yeah, it didn't really hit me until that moment after I after I finished the fifth round. Wow. So man, tell me a little bit about I know you're a person of faith and your family has strong faith. How has your faith in, in Christ uh, oh, yeah. carried you through this? What's been the significance of that? So I always, I always tell people like, if you, if you ever want to, I guess, get closer to God, you, you, I mean, it's, it's good to go through things that are life threatening or something like that, because I mean, your, your, your contact with God becomes way, way, way closer. I mean, before, I mean, I would, I'd pray, I'd, I'd say that I, like, I, like, I mean, I was Christian, but I mean, I didn't really, I didn't really follow the Christian path if you know what I mean, like, I just, like, I wasn't really following God, 
and I was just I was just kind of like, okay, yeah, I'm Christian like this. But I mean, after I got diagnosed, I mean, it it changed everything. Like it, like I will never go back to what I was before. Like it just it changes your whole mindset on life and in, in your faith, hundred percent. Yeah, and that's uh, yeah, it's it, it got that, we don't always understand it, but God allows us to go th- through things like that and exactly and good just and to, yeah, us, to, but it grows yeah. us. Yeah. Right, so you can see how he's, yeah, exactly, yeah. So you can see what he's doing for you, exactly. Yeah, so I know that a lot of people have been there for you through this. What has been, uh, give, give some examples of how your family or the community has kind of rallied behind you. For yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So um, so when I got diagnosed, uh, my school actually made a T-shirts. It's called Braden Crew. Nice. Uh, they were purple T-shirts. Yeah, yeah, so they made a bunch of those. And it actually went, it went from our school and it went to Templeton. And then some other schools after that, and there's most there's a lot of people that were buying them and getting them for me to help me out. Um, and then it's been it's been mainly my school. Um, and then it's been it's actually been like it's crazy because I mean I've had schools from AG, I got AG reaching out, um, St. Joe, Rigetti, like all over the all over the Central Coast have been reaching out to me and my family. Um, and it's it's been great. It's been really good. Like it's just because you really. Like I didn't really feel like I was supported, um, like before this. But then, I mean, now, I mean, it's just it's a whole new like ball game. I mean, I, everybody I know, there's a lot of people that was like, wow, they they support me, like really, like it's it's crazy. That's pretty awesome, man. That's no, it's, that's pretty it's cool. They made yeah. shirts, and we're all wearing those, and yeah, supporting them. That that's that's really really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, kind of give us a current update. How are you doing now? What's some of the the, the diagnosis or the kind of plans and goals for you? Uh, yeah. At this stage. Yeah. So, I mean, everything's going great right now. I mean, I'm just trying to still recover. Um, they said they said about a year till I fully recover. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I don't. I mean, they, I mean, I also I beat cancer in three treatments as well. So I mean, that that wasn't that wasn't um, expected either. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I don't know, I mean, maybe I might, I might get through this two, three months, six months. I mean, I don't really know. I'm just, I'm just trying to play by day, trying to get better and better every day. I'm trying to, I mean, sports, I mean, I've been, been lifting a little bit, um, getting back on the field, getting back in the gym. Um, it's just been, it's just been slow a little bit, but I mean, just got to push through these few months and then it's back on back on the uh, course yeah what do they say is uh is exercise good in your situation could it oh, yeah, yeah. prolong this yeah, he's, they, they were yeah. saying they were saying that exercise is probably the best thing for me okay that and then um high protein is also mm-hmm. gonna help me recover faster and then drinking a lot of fluids so i get the chemo out of my body faster all right yeah wow man well i just uh i know when i was um in high school one of my coaches his uh he had a son that battled cancer and just seeing how the community rallied around and, and all that stuff. I mean, it's amazing. And, and it really makes people kind of pause and reflect on their own life. You know, it's easy to, especially when you're young, think you're kind of invincible or when you get older, you know, you get so worried about all the, you know, mortgage and all the different things that are going on that are part of life. And, uh, and, and it's these kinds of uh, circumstances that make you pause and reflect and re- re- recognize the, the brevity of life and, and how short it can be and stuff. So well, what's exactly. a, kind of a word of encouragement do you have for your peers yeah. and other people yeah, that's- in this season? Yeah, the main thing, the one thing, if I could get anything across to anybody, it would be um, you don't really understand how much you value something until it's gone, right? So you don't, like, take, for instance, walking. You don't really, I mean, you don't, you don't take value, like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to value walking today. I mean, you don't really understand, like, how much you value that until you lose your legs or, like, you, like, you can't walk anymore. Um, roll roll an ankle really, like I did recently, and then it's like ah, I can't. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and that's what that's what most of these people like. They just they, they they don't understand. I mean, it's it's fine because like you haven't gone through something that that makes you humble again. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean it's it's like if you if you really take for granted everything, then you're gonna be it's gonna be a little bit difficult. Yeah. Yeah, so it makes you appreciate the little things even, right? Exactly. And, yeah, because, exactly. yeah. I mean, it, it can all be taken away in an instant. I mean, that's, I, I mean I've, I've experienced that. There's people in this, that's the first they've been experiencing that as well. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's just, it can all be taken away just like that. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's, is there a, do you have like a, a favorite passage of scripture or a quote or something that's kind of encouraged you? To this yeah. You so I was share? actually, I was actually thinking about this. Um, so I have these wristbands um, that I got uh, one. Here's one right here. And then I got another one right here. And I got these a little while ago right here. Um, and the one that I, that I really use is uh, faith over fear. Um, if you have faith then fear is not even in the picture. Hmm. So if you believe in God, like there's no, there's no fear. Like why even, why even be scared? Like why, why even take the chance to be, to be scared or worried about something? Um, and then the other one is the other one that I wear is uh, never ever give up. Mm. And uh, I feel like that's, I mean that's that that's literally my life. I mean you gotta, if I ever, I mean if I'm if I give up, I mean I may not even be here right now. I mean, it's just yeah. like if you got to like, I, I got to learn to just be strong, hmm. never, never give up at all. Amen, man. Yeah, I think in the verse, uh, perfect love casts out fear, you know, and how yeah. we look to the Lord and trust him. Yeah, we, we don't need to be afraid. doesn't mean that things won't still be hard or whatnot, but we can have courage through it. And you've definitely been uh, an example and a, a testament to that, man. Um, I know you were involved with SCA at Paso High, right? In the past and yes. stuff? Okay, yes. awesome. So, yeah, it'd be great, man. You know, obviously things are crazy time with the quarantine and all that stuff but once uh, next year when the school's back in session and everything we often have you come and speak to the the huddle there at paso high mr drake's room and continue to right. your story man i mean your your life is a gift as you know and uh, right. what you've gone through and the perspective that you have is is really quite profound man and so i'm excited yeah. to see how so this is yeah happen. so i got a funny story so um actually yeah. so when i was a freshman i went to fca for the first time and um one of the kids i don't even remember who was somebody was sharing their testimony and uh, I was like, I was thinking, I was like, yeah, this is, this is going to be me junior year. It just, just out of nowhere. Like, I just, I just, like, out of nowhere, I was just like, this is going to be me junior year, not sophomore year, not senior year. This is going to be me junior year. Yeah. And then now, fast forward to now, it's like, this is, like, uh, this is my time to tell my testimony. Like, this is, wow. this is it. Yeah. That's incredible, man. Yeah. It's interesting. You had that kind of foresight, you know, maybe God was preparing you. Right. And, uh, and it's interesting, you know, I, I shared recently with some people, I mean, I've gone through some different challenges and trials in my life, never faced cancer, but um, I know that it's through the, some of the, the hardships that I face in my own life that God, I've, I've grown the closest in, you know, my relationship with the Lord. Oh, yeah. And then it becomes part of your story, and your, your testimony and stuff. And, exactly. and, uh, and so God will, will use, uh, use you in, in, in significant ways, you know, when you look exactly. for the opportunities. Yeah. I mean, you're just, you're just a book and you're just, you just keep getting, you're just adding pages and adding pages as you go along. Yeah. That's what, that's what's going on. Yeah. Amen. Very yes, cool. Sir. So uh, what's been, uh, what was, what was maybe one of the, uh, just kind of wrap it up, but like one of the lowest moments for all this, I know you said that hard day when you had that fever. And then yes. what's kind of been the high when you've kind of seen the, the, the light on the other side of it and all that stuff? Um, I would say definitely finishing the chemo was probably, as soon as I got out of that last round, literally, I was just, it was like cloud nine. Like I, I, I've, I don't think, I mean, you could, you could ask my parents, I mean, some of my friends, I mean, they're, they'll, they'll tell you that like, I'm, I'm different because of, because of what happened. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's changed me for sure. It's definitely changed me for the good. For the good. Cool, man. Yes. How can uh, how can people be uh, praying for you now in this season? Uh, any any uh, thing that people how people can maybe help or get behind you or cause it? Yeah. Um. Well, I got a few. I mean, you could reach out to me. Um. I got my phone number. I mean, you got I got Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. Um. You can reach out to me. Yep. Or I mean, you could just I just pray for me. I mean, that's yep. that's all. Awesome. basically it um yeah so it, it for those of you guys watching one of the things i want to share is that you know the fca community we want to come behind uh brayden you'll see we're going to post some stuff up on social media um mm -hmm. but obviously medical bills and battling cancer all that kind of stuff there's a uh, the brayden crew thing it'd be awesome for all of us just become part of that crew and there's even right. the me and other stuff so we're going to post some links check those out you know because it'd be awesome for all of us just to rally behind brayden um yeah. you know when you first hear about it, people get, you know, motivated. They want to help, but then things got to continue on. And we get right. And we want to see you, uh, you know, get to 100% health and be able to return to sports. And then also right. really begin to use your platform, man, to make a difference. So so uh, I want to pray for you now before we get off. But know that uh, FCA family is behind you. We want to support you. And, Thank you. Uh, Thank yeah, you. Man, 
just yeah. uh, encouraged. So I appreciate you taking the time today. All right. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. All right. God, thanks for Braden and what a just uh, a strong young man he is, Lord. And just thank you for the journey of faith you're taking him through and, and his family and just how he has looked to you um, through this time. And so we just pray, Lord Jesus, your, your word says that you're the great physician. And we thank you that you're a God of miracles, a God who can heal, a God who can comfort in the midst of hardship. And I just pray, pray that you would continue to be with Braden, continue to bring him through to, to full 100% recovery. Um, and this cancer would be, be something just fully in his past, Lord, and that um, you'd be able to continue to use him and grow him and prepare him for all that you have ahead in the future um, with sports with family with career with all that's ahead of him Lord we just love you and thank you for your great love for us in Jesus name amen amen awesome bro hey great to see you good to connect and uh we'll... hey, thanks for having me again all right yeah for sure all, all right. right all right we'll talk to you later see you all right hey thank you for having me you're welcome bye all right see ya bye